I am unashamed. What about you? I turn. I didn't turn my. I turned my mic off yesterday, which is rookie, rookie day for me. Where our first Sunday back, and I get up, my and I turn. I thought it was off. I turned it. You know, but it was the other way around. I turned it off. I start talking. Did y'all meet in the big room? Mm -hmm. We're actually meeting simultaneous now. We got the our instrumental service and our acapella service meeting at the same time, so we're beaming into there. The only problem was that, like from my perspective, is it kind of had me rattled because I mean, there's a lot of timing issues now, and so you're thinking about a lot of stuff. So I get up to preach. You know, normally I'm zeroed in, but I had so much else going on. It took me a little while to get into it. And I was you going, had a sidekick. And had a sidekick. So I couldn't sidekick. do that. Kella. Okay. And Kella preached together. I couldn't do that. I just say, <laughs> pick a date. <laughs> <laughs> you well, know what? Yeah, you know why, Just I would not call you the, the quintessential team player. You're you're definitely more of a lone, yeah. you know. I might have you changed. Say that, wouldn't you say that, Dad? Would you care? They don't call him Lone Wolf <laughs> McQuaid for no reason. All right, let's, let me just back up. <laughs> they don't call me that. You call me. <laughs> so, Therefore, uh, others do. Worst uh, worst event I ever did, my wife and I, because, you know, we do events or we used to. Oh, y'all yeah, try to do it together? Oh, yeah. They're like, <laughs> we want both of y'all. I was like, great. You know, Missy said, I don't know. I was like, what are you talking about? We're one. <laughs> 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 so we go out there, do the event, you know, standing ovation. Everybody's happy. I thought, boy, we've started something. We get to the car, and she's like, well, you going to let me talk now? Ooh. I was like, <laughs> what just happened? Here? You, you thought it was great. It's a free country. I, well, if you got something to say, <laughs> jump in See, see you, you're just used to doing it Robertson style, yeah. which we all understand. You jump in or you're silent. We had to tell Jeff, we had to remind Jeff that on the podcast, Zach, because yeah. it was like, Jeff, if you – if you just sit there, you know, waiting for your moment, it ain't gonna happen. You you got to go. You got to you knife. Got, you got to jump in. You got to jump in. Which That's, is uh, to our audience because a lot of people would say Jay's is rude because he or he talks too much. But it's Robertson style. We get yeah. it. Like none of us are. You yeah. just got to get your point in there. You, you got. You know, you we, we were born with a curse that we can't stop talking. <laughs> 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 well, yesterday Miss K sat next to me. <clears throat> I speak from a table, and two or three of them said, why do you go up there and you sit down, and then you just do your sermon in a seated position? I said, because what what, uh, the American model presented was get up on a pedestal. Right. Uh, What they call a pulpit, the stage. And it's up above, so you're talking down. I said, I don't want to talk down to people. I just want to share with them. I just want to interact with them. I had no idea that's why you were, you were doing that. That's why I'm doing table. that. I didn't want to be seen as to be talking down and to y'all, them. And y'all eat together typically. I don't know if you do now because right. of COVID, but typically so you're around table. It's a different setting. So Miss K sure. says, well, I don't want to catch the coronavirus. I'll die, and I won't be here three days from now in my health. I said, what's well, All her well, various so ailments. So she comes up and sits down. <laughs> We got a couple of bodyguards there pretty close. So all she ever said when I really uh, degraded myself by presenting, I was used to be a low down, sorry, heathen, you know, amen. She'd give it amen. You know. <laughs> Every time I said I was a no good scoundrel, she would say amen. When I said funny. I couldn't trust, I didn't even trust me for 30 years. I couldn't trust me as far as I could see me. Amen. So I sure didn't trust some woman. <laughs> She was like, amen. <laughs> she hit about five in a row. And I thought, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get off of me a little bit. <laughs> of course, they began to chuckle. People began to say, ha, ha, ha. So she was your amen section, but for all oh, the wrong reasons. When I said something bad about me or the truth about me, boy, she come on in there, amen. Uh, and so, cool. so mom, this is a classic mom. So she's such a social person. She's so different from dad. Is your, I mean, you're living the dream down here on the river, never going anywhere. You're, you're great, good to go. Interviews, podcasts, but mom has been, you know, she's got to be with people. So I said, mom, maybe, you, I mean, dad, I think would probably survive it anyway, but you might want to consider not going. Yeah. No way. I'm going. She said, and I've written a letter 
And so and she had her man like walk around to everybody in the room. She wrote a letter yeah. about right. why she couldn't hug him and how much she loved him. And, you know, she was basically a, a, a hug through she the, le- the letter. And then the letter wow. went around to everybody. She <laughs> read the letter. <laughs> she, while she was sitting up there. She'd give them the thumbs up when they would read the letter. So I was she like, was, you know, <laughs> <laughs> she's the first lady. She is. She's well, now lady. she's on stage. Next thing you know, yeah. she'll, be, uh, she'll be trying to do a little light preaching up there Come with on. you. I didn't know. <laughs> but, well, she well, was, I think she's the amen section. It did occur to me after about the fifth amen when I would say something, and, and you know, on my journey of faith, uh, it did occur to me, you know, I said, where's that verse? Women be silent in the church. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to come out at some point. Bring out of the old, way out of the, out of the annals. So of, I, I'm going to tell the crusty I'm going to tell the unashamed nation about this because we're still a couple of weeks out, but just to give you a little teaser. So the sermon you preached yesterday, we filmed it. And so it's going to be part of the book promotion right before the book releases that you get that if you pre-order a copy of the oh, book. Oh, is that so, right? Oh, yeah. Well, that's a good so, sermon so, to Yeah, get. so nobody, there's no other place to get it because we don't normally record well, that maybe stuff. Maybe I should uh-huh. have somebody film. I'm Well, when am I preaching? You're up a on the 20th. Yeah, the 26th. I gave I'm 1 pretty, Corinthians 13, your famous text on love. It and wasn't mine. I, I think that's Paul's. But I, <laughs> yeah. I, I gave him that one. Joke. I like and, First uh, Corinthians 13. There's another yeah. section in there. You know, first, uh, first Peter 4. Uh, you know, in there, you know, God, he has love. I'm going to uncharted territories. I'm, I'm, I'm on this, Are You a King? And based on all the uh, responses that Al, just some, Al forwarded all. to me. I just sent you the ones that disagreed with you. I've realized that, that. Half a dozen. Yeah, I realized that. What are we calling this nation? Unashamed Nation. Unashamed Nation. Is that the name? That's the we, name. That's we have what I've a, heard. We got to get some t shirts. What we have on the King of Kings and Are You a King? We have a failure to communicate. So I'll try to do that in a sermon. By the way, version. those of you that disagree, because we got in your emails. Well, they uh, don't really disagree. No, they're just, they never just heard this before. I've got it at about 95%. I'm winning you. You, you have to. Convince within the all of the various groups the reason they're having trouble with being kings right. is because the king they're still waiting. Yep. That's right on the kingdom to get here. And <coughs> Phil is my first uh, disciple in this theology. I'm just because saying because he realizes <laughs> I'm not talking about the future. I'm talking about right now. Now. It's a but tough it's, sale. They're like, they're let me, like, let me get, no, you're, you're a no, member of a kingdom no. inside an earthly kingdom. The ones that rise and fall, yeah. the ones that rise. You need to. Daniel said, in the midst of all that, yeah. and he counted them down. It's you, Nebuchadnezzar, and then it'll be the Medes and the Persians and the Greeks and then the Romans. In those days, right there, in the time of those kings, the Romans, iron, a little mixed with clay, a little weak, ethnic groups couldn't get together during that time frame. That's when God has set up his kingdom that'll be an eternal kingdom. It'll outlast all the rest of it. It will never be destroyed. It can't be shaken and, nor destroyed. No. And people, they say, well, let's see. Uh, Caesar Augustus was there. Here's Jesus is born for the first 15 years. Then Tiberius, they changed emperors. He comes along, two, two emperors. So the kingdom is founded. AD 33, mm-hmm. a lot of, lot of big winds and people speaking in languages from all over the world. This thing is going worldwide. Well, it's going viral. Bill's we're giving my going sermon. viral. We live in truth. This is my <laughs> No, we're getting this a This is it. In a non-computer <laughs> age, it did go viral <laughs> yeah. to the ends of the earth, starting in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and he said to the ends of the earth. Well, 2,000 years later, we looked down. We said, good night. They pulled it off. So right now, in China, China, the kingdom is doing well, but the Chinese don't even know it's there because they're underneath the Chinese communist UK. Mm-hmm. You don't see church buildings in China. You build your church building Which over there. Which is not necessarily with a, steep- a bad thing. No, yeah. but with a yeah. steeple. But it's not allowed. Well, they're well, under, they're what under, does the kingdom do? It is functions. A bad thing. They're under fierce and it's persecution. it's vibrant, but yeah. they're, they're whispering the scriptures yeah. at night, and they're remembering Jesus, the Lord. So, but they're doing it in secret. But it's it's there. Oh, North it's Korea, there. it's there. Iran, <laughs> it's places you'd never think. Yeah. The kingdom of God is doing yeah. well within that. So. Well, it's, it's a beautiful it, thing. It's, it's, it's Acts 6. 
when they stoned Stephen, I think this is interesting, that up until that point, the church, it, what, they, the, what was the Great Commission to go to Judea, Judea Samaria, and the ends of the earth? Right. Yep. So that was the thing go out. But what they did was, was they huddled up in Jerusalem, the church did, and they were, they were there, and they were growing, and it was vibrant right. until... Uh, was it Acts six when the per- when they stoned Stephen? Well, they seized him Acts. in six and they stoned. They stoned him in seven. Seven was the sermon. Yeah, seven, seven yeah. was the sermon. So they stoned the ultimate suitcase sermon. That was oh, he burned them. Oh, that was a but but, but, but he point, did call a meet there at the end. What was that line? I, 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 yeah, and uncircumcised. I don't think you should ever get up in the <laughs> pulpit <laughs> and not, say that's not what you, you stiff neck. With uncircumcised hearts and ears, because it's almost a crude joke. There. What about Jesus when he said to the Pharisees, "You brood of snakes"? I know I was Vipers. being, I was being sarcastic. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, I think I agreed with him. I'm just saying. This He's gives warned you that, of the coming wrath. This does give your style of pontificating a little weight. It's the shock and all. So, so I go right up to the edge. Phil, Phil, so, so. And sometimes you step over. No, the texts are the texts. This was written, everything written in the past was written for our learning, so you bring up these texts, and I catch a lot of heat from bringing up the texts, but you know what? It is what it is. <laughs> it's one of the funniest things I've ever heard. Dad just did an interview <laughs> for a for a magazine for the, his new book, and I think we need to. That needs to be our new prep for Dad because he came in here loaded for bear today. I, I think, I think you edge. you were well, he was I, preaching to the. I interview. didn't have notes. I just had about two or three big areas. <laughs> I'd make. Sure I came he in. Had he the was Holy just. Spirit. He had that phone. Yeah. He was preaching. He was preaching. He was preaching. Had the Holy Spirit. I mentioned this, the, how oh. the kingdom <clears throat> operates inside an earthly kingdom. How the kingdom of God operates, I said. I said, Melissa, you got to remember that something. is the heart That's of the book, name. by the way. Oh yeah, yeah. It's I, the, I said, Melissa, it's the heart of the book. Jesus yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Now I'm about. gonna write a book. I said, it's you got to remember the stuff kings. about being kings. I, I'm 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 excited about it. I love you it. Know. People but, don't uh, think well, of I, themselves as members. All these verses, are like in Ephesians two, and then you get to First Peter three. There, you know, they're they're royal priesthood. They're they're people belonging to God, a holy nation. Yeah. What well, trust world? me, I a got nation? enough ammo. I thought, I thought Rome was was the, the great power. If I if I if I unleash this ammo right now, I mean, this is like run through a wall <laughs> yeah. type ammo. Just remember, as say- you go, as you go, the Romans said, okay. We're, and Jesus predicted it, Matthew 34 there, 24, Mm -hmm. Matthew 24. He said, oh, they're coming, but you'll survive. You'll survive. You'll make it. And when the book of Revelation comes on, John said, you you got trouble coming like you've never seen before. The Romans said, oh, we're going to stamp this out. We're going to burn it down, and we're going to kill every one of them and (laughs) feed them to lions, and we're we're going to stop this movement when the smoke cleared. Rome was no more, and we're all still here. And we've been to Rome. But look. We, we've look, been to Rome. Well, what? Rome. Hey, and what? I saw Zeus out there. He was on the ground. In Greece, yeah. In about four pieces. He was <laughs> lying, lying there. I thought, there's, there's Zeus, Zach. He looked over. I said, that's what the Romans were so proud of. <laughs> that, that was the best That was the best line we caught it on. And it was just a gorilla, uh, uh, yeah. you know, filming. Gorilla. Just think yeah. about it. What, think of all the kings that, that there's – been. Oh, where are they at now? They're dead in the ground. Okay. And look, you think about how we use that. Like, who's the king of basketball? Yeah, LeBron. Well, there's a debate now. No, Le- no, they call him Le- King James. Yeah, oh, LeBron. King. LeBron. James. Well, I thought Michael. Jordan Who is the king of golf? No, but they actually call well, he's him. Not, king he's not. He's no longer reigning. Who's he the what? king of golf? Tiger Woods. No. Oh, wow. that's right. <laughs> what was this? The oh, king. The king. Uh, Palmer. Arnold, Arnold Palmer. Palmer. He was known as the king. <laughs> the king of rock and roll. He, he, but he wasn't Who was really the king, king of rock and roll? Elvis oh, well, Presley. Elvis Pre- we're, we're throwing that around, and look, most of these people are dead. <laughs> the king of country, Hank Williams. There you go. The king Which of, is my the, point. The king of the pop. king of pop, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. So dead. here we are. Look, so here we are. I'm just giving you – We. I didn't want to go down this road. Y'all forced me. <laughs> That's why so here we are. when you're talking to them, they're going to be right here, and they're going to say, so you're saying – you're a king. <laughs> take a hang, break. Hang on, we gotta take a break. Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. So one of the things that a lot of our audience is, uh, a lot of young people uh, are watching our podcast and listening to it, which we appreciate you guys doing that. 
And uh, one of the things that is, you know, we're older now, but I, I try to think back of when I was in my 20s and 30s and, you know, you're raising your family. And, and I wasn't always the uh, – we didn't have a lot of money. Uh, we didn't grow up with money. And then I was in ministry, which I, I didn't realize that I was taking a vow of poverty by going into ministry because we didn't – you know, we don't pay a lot of money uh, to work for the church apparently. And so, you know, we, we struggled financially and a lot of a lot of – Kids now come out of college and they have all this debt. You know, it's just way more expensive than to go. And so they have a lot of credit issues. And so we realize there's a lot of you out there just starting a family. You're just looking to, you know, build your first house, buy, buy a car, these kind of things. So one of our um, one of our sponsors is a group called scoremaster.com. And I had a really interesting conversation with them because these guys are pretty smart. Uh, about raising credit scores, you know, to be able to help you when you got to get a loan, when you got to, you know, just try to basically live your life because it's it's tough. I mean, the the you know the approach to it's better if you just had the money for everything, but when you're young and you're already in debt because you've been in college, you know, it's tough. So these guys basically they can help you raise your credit score very quickly uh, if you go check them out, and, and they're going to show you how you can do it. Some on here I'm reading 61 points in 20 days, which is amazing. Uh, someone had theirs raise up 102 points in just 11 days. So uh, they've got a science that is able to super boost your credit score. So that's what these guys are about. Um, it helps you to be able to, you know, live your life and hopefully um, be responsible and get a loan and do things you need to do. So if you'll visit scoremaster.com slash Phil, scoremaster.com slash Phil, uh, these guys can show you how to uh, get that credit score up. So you have the Holy Spirit of God inside of you, which would make you indestructible. You have all the answers of life on how you got here, what you're supposed to be doing here. You have the ultimate counselor for any situation. You represent heaven itself. That's what a king is, is the public, if you read the definition, the public persona of the state. Mm-hmm. Well, so here we are representing heaven, and people say, oh, yeah, but you're not a king. <laughs> well, I'm more of a king than this guy playing basketball, you know, because he's throwing a round object into a round hole. And people say, boy, dude's a king. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this guy can put a smaller round object into a little bigger hole in the ground. King. <laughs> <laughs> what? This guy can shake his rear and play music. <laughs> king! <laughs> it was the hips that made yeah. him the, the king. The yeah. So my point is, what we're dealing with is a little more weighty. <laughs> and so when it when I read in Revelation 5.10, it says we reign on the earth. People say, yeah, one day. One day we'll get up there and we'll, we'll reign. Well, I think we're doing that right now. We just don't do it in a physical kingdom way. It's right. the opposite of what you think, Spiritual which is my whole point. Kingdom. That's why when it says the king well, leads the warriors, he leads armies, and they're like, well, it's, why, it's, why would it's, you bring all that up? Look, Ephesians 6 says something about spiritual armor that we have that makes us a king, which is the opposite of the physical. So more later. You're being built into a spiritual house. <laughs> To be a holy, yeah. Get in front of your mic, Phil. We can't hear you. You, you went into a cave. <laughs> being built into a spiritual house, uh, holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God mm-hmm. through Christ. Mm-hmm. I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. It's all built on Him. The house is. He's the cornerstone that keeps everything plumb. Uh, now, you who believe this stone is precious, those who don't believe the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone and a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. Listen to it, Jace. <clears throat> they Listen. stumble because they disobey the message. Faith comes from here. The message the message is heard through the word of Christ. Who is he? God in flesh died for your sins, took them away, buried, raised from the dead. You are a chosen people. That's pretty cool. A lot of people on planet Earth, 7 billion. A royal priesthood. What kind of priesthood? A royal, <laughs> meaning sounds like kings and queens, just, uh, just off the top of my head. Yeah. A holy nation, 
of people belonging to God inside this den of iniquity, wherever you are. China, America, you say, you look around, you say, boy, this thing. What does the king do, Phil? Look, think about it. They are responsible. When you read, when you just make it separate part and you read definitions and encyclopedias, they're responsible for the character, the integrity of, of their people. They're representing that. So you just think what you do through the Holy Spirit of God. I mean, it's not us. Because mm-hmm. ultimately, the point I'm going to make in the sermon is I don't care if you think you're a king or not, because we it's really about the king of kings. Correct. But he he's treating me like that, a la Luke 15, with the robe and the crown and all these. It wasn't a physical thing. It was the spiritual things that you see later on that those things represent. And we're humble kings. It's nothing like... A worldly king. That's why people are having trouble with it. They're like, oh, you think we're going to live in a palace with a bunch of jewelry? I'm like, no. Many a, t- <laughs> many a tyrant has come forth from being a king. Yeah. But this, watch, once you were not a people, now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you've received mercy. Now, what's this. Here's here's the way the kings operate on planet Earth 2,000 years from the time the king who established the kingdom showed up. I urge you, that's why this makes me feel better than anything I've ever read in the Bible, because I always go to the, what if they saw you walking down the road? They saw Jace. He went to New York City. He walked in. He's a member of the kingdom of God. He walked in and looked around. We're in Trump Hotel. It didn't take five minutes for the personnel who worked for Donald Trump <laughs> to remove him from the premises. They took Jace and pointed him to the street. They said, have a good nice day, sir, meaning you're out of the building. All he asked, where you take a leak? He said, we'll show you. And they took him to the street. He's gone. So I'm like, that's no way to treat a king. But Jace rolled in there without knowing it. He rolled in the Trump Tower as an alien and a stranger. He just didn't fit the mold with the people that were staying at the hotel. You're preaching my sermon again, Phil. Look, I actually wrote down, look, we may not look like a king. We may not feel like a king. We may not even act like a king all the time. And I mean spiritual king. But guess what? We're a king. Watch. I, I, would, I would add to this, though. I think it's important that it's it isn't, or maybe modify it. It is not... It is spiritual, but that doesn't mean it's not physical because, listen to this, in Acts 7, the okay. reason why Stephen got killed was because he was attacking their structure of the temple that Solomon built. And then mm-hmm. in verse 48, he says, however, the Most High does not dwell in houses made by human hands. Skip over to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and when he's talking about sexual immorality, he says, Paul says, all sins a man commits are outside his body. Mm-hmm. But he who sins sexually, except for one, sexual morality, he who sins sexually sins against his body, which is what? A temple. Temple. Your yeah. body is so it's not it's not that it's not physical because then you, you wind up getting into some kind of Gnosticism. It's it's that it's spiritual and physical. I think that the theology of the kingdom is that I am the temple. Yeah. I'm right. the temple. My body's the temple. My spirit as well as my body. So it's yep. not it's not we're not anti body and we're not it's it's well, not right. anti physical. Because also you there's a bodily resurrection. Yeah. If there wasn't a bodily resurrection, okay, maybe. So the kingdom the kingdom what I'm saying there. is the kingdom <clears throat> is is physical, it's but it's physical and spiritual and it's not in full fruition yet. We're we're building it right now. We're right. building God's kingdom. Live such good lives among the pagans. That though they accuse you of doing wrong, it's a drumbeat. They're constantly after my hide and y'all's too. Uh, although they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds has to come forth and glorify God on the day He visits us. When it all ends, they're going to say, "Who, who, who who's, who's what?" The kingdom will be standing there saying. Well, right. Here but I think to Zach's point, Pretty cool. I just meant it's not about palaces and pageantry. Yes. Which is where people immediately go. When you think king, you're like, oh, living in a palace, sitting around, sipping a 
you know, cocktail <laughs> with a bunch of servants. Yeah, borders. <laughs> maybe, got, well, yeah. maybe some you know, uh, palm you know, leaves, <clears> you know, grapes. keeping you cool. So anyway, I don't know how we got off into <clears> all that, but that's coming to a podcast near you. Well, and I want to make one other point about that. Well, let's take another break. So one of our new favorite uh, sponsors, and I have a couple of their products right here, uh, is uh, Casey Lund Blades is what mm-hmm. they're called. And uh, we love these. Jace has already put his into practice. I've used it. I want to bring mine in. Uh, several issues yeah, that have so come the, up. Because this is a, they got a really cool. They all have a different sheath that holds them. But uh, mm-hmm. really good knives, high quality. I had a great conversation with Casey uh, and his wife. Uh, and they're very passionate about what they do. It reminded me a lot of you, Dad, like when you first started out, because they just started doing this. I mean, he, he's into swords and all that, which I kind of like some of that stuff, too. And so that got him into just, what does it take to make a sword? And then all of a sudden it was knives, yeah. and then he got good at it. And so he's been doing it basically for 30 years. It's called capitalism. There you go. Somebody sent me a sword, and I, I used it to clean those frogs. Really? Yeah, it was awesome. Someone sent me a knife that that you can take a – 30 pound block of cheese and with these cut you off whatever you want i mean it's a curve like a sword yeah. it looks like a one of those old uh, it is quite the knife yeah. in it out oh it is yeah yeah that that was me and your your daughter that sent you that for father's day <laughs> yeah anyway, i didn't know where it came from thank other, y'all for it that's but all, i like this knife i like that yes it, the knives are awesome we like them uh we're already starting to use them um so check these guys out it's kc Lund blades. That's what it's called. So it's KC Lund. In, um, it's KC Lund. KC L U N D blades dot com. That's KC Lund blades dot com. Check them out. Uh, you're gonna love them. So to your point, because I just preached a sermon recently from John six, where Jesus is telling you, have, "You eat of my flesh and drink of my blood." And that that basically turned off most of his followers. I mean, yeah. everybody left but the twelve. But the the thing was, it, he was talking physical and spiritual again because what he was saying was, in this body, God in flesh is what's bringing salvation. In other words, it it's in me, yeah, and That's I'm right. here in flesh, which was totally the Gnostics totally missed that. But he he stated it plainly. Now later on, once the disciples saw the resurrection, they saw him back. You know, he died and he came back. Then they're like, oh, well, we get it now. Then they went back. Well, guess who their first converts were? Some of those same people. Because yeah. now, once the resurrection happened, they saw it clearly. Then they knew. Well, that's why the kingdom can't be shaken or destroyed, the one that Daniel prophesied about. Because if you have borders, then we can rally around the borders and we can attack. Or they can attack the borders and the, and the castles and the palaces. But if the kingdom's in the people... You can't. Hey, you can't. That, I how, how do you snuff it out? You can't snuff it out. But I agree. They can't with your get point. to the head. <clears throat> That's right. <laughs> because the, no, head, the head is Jesus. Well, and they laugh at the body. They're like, oh, see, so you're. Which is, look, the whole point, the, the whole reason I brought this up is because the reason this has given me fuel. For people to say, oh, you're way off. <laughs> that's funny. Is because that's what they did when they asked Jesus, oh, so you're a king? <laughs> you're so far off that you're, well, they're doing the same thing that we're following the king. Said, so, well, yeah, he's he's the king of kings, but they're looking and saying, you, you're an old bearded duck dynasty <laughs> dropout. You're not a king. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I, I'm seeing a similarity there, which is coming from that first. But you know, Jason, in your defense, the night before that this happened that morning that Jace was trying to find a bathroom at the Trump Hotel, uh, who's the Aerosmith lead guy? Stephen Tyler. Tyler. Yeah, so Tyler. He, so he comes in. Remember Dad, we were there, so we oh, were checking yeah. in. He was there, but he didn't look like a king either. He looked pretty rough. I mean, you know, he's had yep. a little work done. He had a pizza and a little small dog with him. But I mean, you talking about a guy that just looked like he wandered in. I mean, I we must talked have missed him. that. Oh yeah, yeah, you weren't there. That maybe that was. He while told Dad. He said. He said, "I use your duck decoys." He meant his duck calls, but he said decoys. But he said he duck hunts. He yeah. has a big place in well, there. He was, you know, he uh, like Ted him Nugent already. got him and the band guys off the of drugs. Really? Yeah. So maybe they started hunting with Ted. Oh yeah. Well, well Ted's a Ted's a killer now. Ted, he he yeah. he's Ted's a whack a him and stack him. Man. Yeah. So so all right. So Zach's on the podcast. Before we get to John, if we get there, um, 
tell them about the so we, we uh, last time you were was it last time Zach was on when we made the, I don't know I, but I nobody said no Zach was here here's what's funny nobody I had this idea live no he wasn't on here no that's right because we were Cause saying I threw you under the bus <laughs> here's what happened <laughs> oh, shocker I said we because you you can't you and Al came to me hey let's do this show about metal detecting since you're gonna do it anyway I was like okay y'all are trying to make a buck or something. Or and something. I like metal detecting, <laughs> and I like the spiritual applications of it, and I've shared them. So I and like, you have a history of television. You've been on a show before. Yep. <laughs> There's that. I, I didn't really want to be. <laughs> so what is the word for that? <laughs> Unreluctantly, uh, I don't know. So You're a big star, Jay. We said so. We've pitched shows before, but Hollywood. Let's face it. In general, their vision does not line up with our vision, <laughs> and so we have a clash. And so uh, I said, well, let's do something different. So instead of going out shooting this little cheesy sizzle reel, is what they call them, we just did an interview and said, here's what we do, here's who we are, and this is what we find. And so then I said, well, let's just ask the people. And then I told everybody, because I, I, was, I wasn't going to read it, so Jep was on the episode. We That's who was there. That's right. I knew there was someone. So Jep, because he's my, me and Jep yeah. and Murray are the, the characters or whatever. And uh, So you laid the premise out for the show to yeah, Unashamed We spent Nation. the whole hour. What, we talked a lot about it a lot, yeah. And so I threw it out there. I have absolutely no idea if anyone responded. So I've kind of been So that off. episode dropped yesterday. So so how many people yeah, waited? Let's hear the report. Yeah, I'm yeah. really anxious. So yeah, we've had. I, mean, I think we probably had seventy thousand people have voted. Overwhel- really? Over- yes, seventy thousand. Seventy. The mark was seventy five percent. So what is seventy five percent of seventy thousand? Or is it close? Or what's the to the unashamed? Well, we're not done yet. So I mean, I, I got. I have to. I have to run the numbers because yeah, you 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 threw that on me without telling me so. <laughs> It's always the best plants. <laughs> Basically, we call that the tail wagging the dog, oh, but yeah. then you got to get yeah. ready for it. Right? The <laughs> best plans in life happen on the spur of the moment. Yeah. So well, and Jen, who's our analytics yeah. guru, she's she's on the case. I got too. Jen on it now. Cause so, that, so far, though, give the give so, the people a feel. Are we are we doing the show so far? So it, so just for what the numbers we have, and we're not over. So it would need fifty two thousand five hundred. Thumbs up out of that seventy thousand yeah. to say we're going to because that's the Jace laid the bar high. He's like, yeah. this is like a constitutional amendment here. We're not just going on fifty. Yeah, if it's not seventy five percent, if there's if half of you don't want to do it, we ain't doing it. So we don't know what they vote. Well, the, 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 I will say that the 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 number one comment is maybe a deal breaker for you. What's the, that? the number one comment is they they want you to add side to the mix. Ah. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> is, that a deal, is that a deal breaker? I mean, if you want to have, while we're metal detecting, if you want him sitting under a tree, wheezing. I'm just telling you what the people said. Okay? Let me tell you, he's at a point in his life now when he walks outside, he's tired. <laughs> so he comes back in. Well, can, Size, uh, unfortunately, he, uh, he has COPD. And so it's as he gets older, it's definitely, he, he gets a little more winded than he used to. That's for sure. Yeah. He, he gets digging, winded now. I'll just story. tell you right now, he ain't digging a hole in the ground. No. That ain't and he'll sit over and give commentary for you. Doing. Well, we could just have him, yeah, have be like a, like Mount Man was on the dynasty, yeah. like a recurring character that comes in with commentary from time to time. <laughs> Actually, we could have Mount Man on there from yeah. time to time. Oh, I hadn't yeah. seen Mount Man in a yeah. while. Yeah. All right, well, so, but you're not, I, so uh, you don't know if it's overall, you got, you got to get I mean, somebody I mean, to I check. Gotta, yeah, I mean, this, you, we just posted it last night, so I mean, I, I haven't had time. You, I, right now, we've got about 70,000 responses, overwhelmingly thumbs up, but oh, okay. I haven't, like, I mean, I have not. Actually, it, I, I, mean, I guess 70,000 is a big number. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. At. So you're saying. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm doing what? hundreds of emails. And it's, from I'm skimming it, it you, you're you saying I the say show is going on. I think we may have to do it. <laughs> I think, I'm surprised 70,000 people took time to say, yeah, let's do this. Well, somebody sent me what's well, funny on the email. They were like, I don't know how to get a hold of Zach, but I'm a yes. <laughs> I saw that. Well, I told them to put your stuff they up. Did. Yeah, they did. They did. He just missed it. But he wanted me to know. I've got a lot of Facebook requests for friends. I'm like, I don't know any. I mean, it's just a so yeah. This is your this is so big you day. May, I guess you may have, ca- you may have catapulted me. <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, you are now stardom. I love it. 
Um, what, but we had Murray Crow. It was interesting uh, interviewing Murray. Man, hey, that guy is a wealth of knowledge. Oh. oh, I mean, where does he get this stuff? He makes his own firearms. I Literally, mean, it's, it's crazy. He made Jeff Barrel, a, a rifle. Stark, yeah. Huh? Well, no, he made he brought, Jeff a he brought, rifle. He brought a. He brought over. Y'all may have talked about this. Um, he brought over a meteorite that he found in, yeah. in Kansas. In, yeah. He, oh, he's he's found a bunch of them that he sold. Well, he says I sold yeah. one for like fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Right? So oh. he's. I mean, he's like. So there's a quality about a meteorite that's valuable. Oh yeah. I mean, Some assuming. of these things. Oh are yeah. Like, look, one of the one of the things we're into metal detecting is you run up on a meteorite. Because, like, one day I found something, and I said, what is this? He was like, I think it's a meteorite. I, think, I mean, he starts going crazy, you yeah. know. Turned out it wasn't. But he's like, now that's a, you know, something from the star. He went, like, Star Trek, you know, lingo. <laughs> he went, he went from Mr. The Spock on you. Black Star Cyborg, you know. <laughs> and I was like, dude, what? <laughs> well, the, that's worth about 30000 That's all I heard. In the future, days when he does that, just go fascinating. You know, just yeah. give him one of those. Remarkable. Remarkable. But he's, there's, <laughs> evidently, there's a market out there for these space meteorites from different planets. Vulcan or whatever. <laughs> like Vulcan. But here's what I'm saying. You Vulcan's can, not a real planet, Judge. I'm just saying. No, well, yeah. you can laugh. None of this seemed real until he said, <laughs> you know, I've made $50,000 selling meteorites. Well, that money's real. So they thought that this meteorite, and he showed me the table where this is worth this, this is worth yeah. this, and they have the meteorites that hit. They have it all documented where they came from, and it's a world you can get into. I really, if I find one, I'll just let Murray be my broker. Let him sell it. Yeah, because I'm not, I'm not into, you know. Yeah. To me, that's I, I, I found him to be the most interesting of the whole thing, just because he has. I mean, he's kind of like kind of like you feel like he, his 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 genre. He knows it. I mean, he. Oh, yeah. he well, I think if we didn't have him, this thing wouldn't be legitimate. Yeah. It would be too. You know, duck guys out there stumbling yeah. around in a field. <laughs> yeah, you got to have an expert. Coins. But he's he knows the lay of the land. I mean, what he does in his spare time is look at maps and evidently stars. And he he just knows. You know, and, and some stuff like that, I'm not sure what it is, but like come off some machinery or something. He's like, oh, that's from a whatever. <laughs> I'm like, how do you know this? But he's found so much stuff. Let's take another break. So one of the things that, um, you know, running a business, uh, you got a lot of different costs. You got a lot of different people. You got, you know, the bigger the business, the more you got to deal with. We saw it happen with our company because, I mean. It's a good problem. It's a good problem. It, it, yeah. It's growth. I mean, when, when it was just mom and dad and Jace and Missy, you know, I mean, you know, you don't have a lot of issues because you, you just got too bad. two families to take yeah. care of, right? Unless some of your family members are crazy. Yeah, exactly. We had that. We had that. So well, once you do sign in the mix, that's yeah. exactly right. So I got there. So we didn't have a lot of, uh, we, we didn't know much about human resources back in that day. Of course, I guess this is uh, an area that's grown a lot. You got, you know, lawsuits, minimum wage, labor, labor regulations. You got all these different issues now that companies have to face and, and as soon as you get big enough you got to deal with all I mean, of it so you get you, i'd love to know what they would have said about si. I mean, human relations they they get si. human I mean, resources where do, where do you put him what category there's not a there's not a category for size. To show you how much I knew about it, I said they said, "What about a guy who'll walk right up to the line, <laughs> but he won't step across that line and, and act like a complete fool?" What would you say about a guy that that would come up there and stop before he crosses that line? I said, "Well, I think he's wise and he understood what he's doing." <laughs> he said, "What about the guy who steps on across that?" I said, "Well, he's a fool or an idiot." He said, "No, he has talent, and yeah. the other didn't." Yeah. yeah. What he was telling me was. I didn't have the time. Ta- I wasn't as talented as Sai because Sai <laughs> will play like he's a fool with ease. Well, if Sai were here and I asked him, I would say he would probably say, "I'd be a human resources nightmare," and he probably would. So anyway, uh, we didn't have this issue when we were first started. It's an issue now. I'm sure Willie has to deal with it, and other people. Uh, there's a great group uh, called Bambi B A M B E E. It's uh, specifically for small business. Uh, you don't have to hire an HR guy because basically they offer one online uh, for you to be able to to do the things you need to do. So uh, month to month, no hidden fees. You can cancel anytime. 
Uh, so it's not one of these deals where, you know, you get locked into these long-term things. So uh, if you need them, you get a free HR audit today. So you can check them out at Bambi, B-A-M-B-E-E dot com slash Robertson. You get a free audit uh, and see if these guys can help you uh, with human resources. In, in a way, it's like uh, dad was on Duck Dynasty because you know everybody else was kind of silly and funny and had all the stuff going on. Dad was usually always the voice of, you know, just – of course, I thought dad was hilarious on the show because – all the stuff he did, which was so dad, because it was really what he would do, like yeah. talking to the grandkids. Now, those are the kind of scenes I remember. I mean, all the other stuff we did was great, too. In fact, it's funny, Jay. You know, I haven't watched the show in forever. And so what we. Show? Duck Dynasty. Oh. The show we used I, to do. I haven't watched it at all. Well, I know. I mean, I haven't yeah. since we had it. But I, what I'm saying is, we were doing, at least I were doing an interview for Fox Nation the other day. And so, like, it was a Zoom thing, so I couldn't see it, but we had we had our earbuds in, so I'm listening. And they ran about a minute of clips, you know. Yeah. They were, you know, they're going to show it, but we were just at least our listening. Well, I said, I got tickled laughing. I said, man, I mean, I'd forgotten. The show was pretty funny. Yeah. I mean, it was funnier I than you I never really. I was too close to it. I mean, we would watch it the week before it was released, and then I just – couldn't watch it anymore. But the only time, the hardest I ever laughed is when we were in Mexico and we watched it in Spanish. <laughs> I don't know Spanish. It was hilarious. We <laughs> of laughed. The I laughed so hard. I was crying. I couldn't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and we had no idea because the size character, especially, it, it just was kinda so a- off the <laughs> chart. <laughs> of course, it, you know, his mouth's moving. It's kind of like these uh, Japanese movies, right. you know what I mean? Yeah, right. But it was just... They they had totally different emotions with the voice and uh, just to show you the power of TV. I always just thought, well, and everybody else in the family size about half a bubble off. But a guy <laughs> who's a half a bubble off, I found out that the the Hollywood crowd said, no, he's not half a bubble off. He's very talented. That's talent. And we all read next time. I said, do what? You talk about Cy? They said, yeah. Well, they said, he's half bubble off and because they're most people, most people, when they come right up to the line and you step across that line, you become a complete idiot or a fool. And they said, what about a man like that? I said, well, some people are wise enough to know the line. They said, the, the power of your brother is – He'll step over that line every time. He'll go into the idiot world. Well, they said that you call that, sir, talent. So I got a lesson on what talent is, and I'm thought, man, I said, size going ballistic. But they don't realize. And he did. Size just that way. Oh, he is. And it, and it doesn't matter. He'll come over to the house. He comes to my house at least twice a week now just to eat. Because he and Stone are buddies, you know, and he yeah, loves yeah. steak and meats, you know. So, and he comes over there, and so they'll have these guys in because they got some little side businesses they're doing, selling stuff. I don't know what all they're doing. And so they'll have the, they'll have, Jay will have these little guys there. So their business meeting consists of eating meat, smoked meats, and then Cy telling stories, you know, for an hour. Out of seven children stretched out over. Good night. Nearly a century. Twenty years. Nearly a century. Oh, now he's in yeah. living. Yeah, yeah. Uh, out of the seven children, there's two standing. Yep. Sai and me. And all the rest of them are gone. But so we're dwindled down oh, yeah. to the last two standing. You know, the resurrection is looming larger each yep. day, each passing day. Resurrection looming bigger, yep. looming bigger. You're like, hmm. Yeah. And now we're. I'm up. glad it's something to be held on to. That hope there. I'm right. glad there's something there to where you say, well, if the Bible is true, we got out of here alive. So That's I'm right. all in. I, I can't budge, well, uh-huh. especially at 74. I can't dare budge because this is it. Right. The only shot I have. Well, we talked about this for the generational faith element of our family. And a lot of people have asked me about this that are watching and listening to the podcast. And it is so important because, I mean, when you baptize my granddaughter, you know, a, a great grandfather baptizing his great granddaughter. Yep. I mean, to me, that was a clear image of what we want to do going yep. forward. If you get enough families that generationally, then you don't lose. You know it. what's amazing, Al? That's under severe attack. Yeah. The patriarchal system. I heard some guy get up there, do away with that. We don't want that. They don't want it passing down, like you said, from the children. The grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, in my case, possibly the great-great-grandchildren, 
They don't like that at all. No. But I'm looking at it as a thing of complete beauty. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Well, the song I'm missing them saying yesterday was about that. It's a yeah. blessing. Where, where's it from? Numbers? Where yeah. It says from generation <clears throat> and their children and their children. Oh. Missy gets emotional every time she sings it. Yeah. Because yeah. she's like, you know, it's really the promise that was mentioned in Acts 2. That's so 39. splintered now, Al, in America. It's, it's so 39. splintered and divided. You're it's seeing the fruit exactly. of it in our streets. You're like, yep. Check me out on Look, for, Sad I know, thing to watch. We're not going to have time to get to John today, so I'm going to tell you, I did something yesterday I hadn't done in a long time. I watched TV. All right, well, hang on. Let's take one last break and then tell us. Uh, but, yeah, it was X2. Yep. 39 the, the promise. promises for you and your children and for all who are far off he, the promise of the holy spirit and forgiveness but yesterday i watched tv and you know i look and it they have golf on now which since there hadn't been sports in months because the coronavirus it was actually somewhat exciting and so the first person i see on there is uh this bryson dechambeau who looks a hundred pounds heavier and we well, you know for, the camera has 10 pounds. No. Just a reminder. I'm saying from the last time I saw him, I was like, what happened? And what's going on here? Well, then the more I'm hearing the story, and he's leading a tournament. He's hitting the ball like superhuman distances. They use that word. That's why. Any Anytime I ever hear a godly word, I always take note. Because we got something superhuman going on, you know that that old Jim Nat. It's almost superhuman. <laughs> That's the way he was saying. Because they're look, they're trying to get ratings. Yeah. There's no other sports, so now we have a superhuman being. Yeah, they're the only game in town now. hitting the ball. He was average, and they were showing all his stats. He like outdrove his playing partner fourteen hundred yards on fourteen drives of the day. Wow. I mean that this is insane. Yeah. So I'm like, what happened to him? Because he looked like he had swallowed a bunch of cantaloupes. I'm, I, I'm serious. Just look. They said he's drinking seven uh, muscle milk protein shakes a day, you know, working out. So while the coronavirus hit. So it was, he's not fat. It was muscle. He's swole. And he's here's swole why, up. Oh, he's just swole. Yeah, he was, yeah, the more I got to looking, I was like, oh, he's been working out. <laughs> but look, here's here's the funny thing. Here's why I tell you this is is, is interesting, is that I met this guy. About three or four years ago, I was at the Green Bar yep. with Willie and and Bubba had uh, Bubba Watson, who we're friends with through Jesus. You know, Bubba's kind of a weird acting person, but he loves Jesus. So, and well, he fits perfectly. Yeah, weird is because we're in, weird but... too. And so, like, weird well, is perm- permissible. Oh, I know. <laughs> in look, the kingdom of God. So, what's really weird is when us and Bubba are together. Because now we just got a bunch of weirdos, and everybody's looking at us like, "Oh, I don't, I don't even want, I don't know what to do with that." And By so, the way, before you leave, before you leave that, you can probably find it on the internet. I thought about this the other day because I heard the word Harlem Shake. Do you remember oh, yeah. a few years yeah. ago when that? That's thing, the first day we met. That's right, uh, Bubba Watts. So he, he comes to Duck Commander. Well, he just sent, and it was sent, his idea. He right? sent me a message on Twitter and said, "I like y'all show. I'm coming down there." <laughs> And I said, I'm out of town doing an event. He said, I'll be there tomorrow. I said, I won't be there. I'm at, every time I responded, I was like, I won't be there. I met him on Twitter. He's like, well, I'm coming down there. Don't come in. I'm going to Google it. Well, I wasn't sure if he was serious or not. Yeah. So when I landed that day, Missy said, hey, Bubba Watson's here. I was like, that dude was serious? <laughs> I mean, I thought I was having And he a had just won the Masters, I think. So I literally walk into Duck Commander. And they're doing the Harlem Shake. That's right. And so, and I was I working with you. What is that? Well, <laughs> oh boy, I knew that. Don't even, I don't even have to know. I just thought it was. <laughs> it's a dance. It's a. Dance. It was a viral dance that was going crazy on the internet. Al, the more we say, the I'm matter trying to put it all together get. in my mind. It's where your legacy was. Hey, <laughs> golf pro, it was Harlem a Shake. Well, look, you'll like what I did. I stood there. Look, people think, and that they I, wonder why I self quarantined so, for about forty five years. So here's, but here, here's what happens on the Harlem Shake video. So you'll be in a setting or a scene where it's like normal, everybody's just there, and then this song starts playing, and then you shift to some insane dance. That's that's what yeah, happens. That's, that's, that's I stood there with a shotgun. People think that I was uh, what do you call, photoshopped in, but I actually wasn't. You were I there? Never moved. I was the only person that didn't. Everybody move. else was dancing, but Jay. I was just standing there with a shotgun. <laughs> no, is that cool or what? I just so remember anyway. that was the first time we met Bubba. That's so why. anyway. I'm at the Green Bar. Well, we, he said, "You want to go to Devo tonight?" I was like, "They do a Devo on the PGA Tour." He's like, "They actually do." Wow. I said, 
shocked. I'm in. I tried to get him. Let me talk. I said, let me do the preaching. Because it's one of them deals where I felt like if it's not good, I just soon do it, you know. But he <laughs> said, no, I don't know if I can swing that. So I was like, you're Bubba Watson. You can do anything you want to. Come on. He's you like, won the Masters. I don't think I can swing that. I was like, okay. So we go down. And it was a little cheesy and crusty, I will have to admit. However, I was looking at all the tour players who were in there because I was like, I'm now a fan. I'm now a right, fan. You're making a note. Bryson DeChambeau was in there. Really? Now, look, I don't know if he's a believer. I don't know if he was just visiting. I, he was in there. But here's why I'm bringing this up, because this guy's like revolutionary to the golf world. He's like supposedly the smartest golfer ever. He's he has some golfer. PhD, or I doubt he does, but he's from Stanford. He's like, he's an analytical man. So like all his clubs are the same length. He doesn't use what everybody else, because he's like, I think this way is better. So he's all the time uh, testing the boundaries. Like his swing is built on what they call, uh, I think he calls it rotational end or what, like he'll take his elbow and turn it as far as you can as possible. Then he'll grip the club that way. And he's like, it ain't going the other way or it'll break. And so then he builds a swing off the limits, the the boundaries of what your body can do. So it can become. I'm very repeatable. limited right now. My God. But, but here's my point for telling very you this limited. long story. Here's supposedly, and look, the, the media, they love him because he's a science. He's a man of science. Science. But see, here I am. The only time I met him, we were in there talking about Jesus. And mm. I thought, here's who they've deemed as the smartest golfer in the world. And they love him because he's, he's challenging the boundaries. And I'm like, he's smart enough to realize that one day you're going to die. I don't know his background. You know, I don't know what he's into, but I know that he took time out of his schedule to sit around and talk about Jesus, you know, and the resurrection. So to me, I just, I was impressed by that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it's something that when you think, what is the defi definition of intelligence? The term fearfully and wonderfully made comes to mind. Yeah. But I think that when somebody's really smart, so it's short, short line, little line between science and fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. So I don't know. I've Just always, a thought. I've always been a fan of him because he was in that group that night, and I said, "Hey, I'm, you know, I'm Jace. You know, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's he had never seen an episode <laughs> of Deck Dynasty, and he was wondering why I was sitting next to Bubba." <laughs> <laughs> but still, I, I kind of knew that, and I thought I like this guy just because they always talk about him being a man of science, and which I've always said I love science. I believe God's the greatest scientist in the world, or you know, greater than the world. But it's just something that I wish uh, would even be said there, because I'm sure the commentators and all would be shocked by that, you know, because most of the time in Hollywood. It's always, it's kind of like uh, Nacho Libre, which is a movie I tried to get you to watch on a duck hunting trip. And you I was refused. just fixing to bring that up. That's Phil, Phil would not do it. You know, you had, you had, it's one of the greatest movies ever, Phil. <laughs> if you would just get over the embarrassment of watching it, <laughs> it's funny. Get over the embarrassment of watching <laughs> yeah. it. It has no plot. Nobody cares. It's just funny. It is funny. And Jack Black's character is a, is a monk. I think. Well, he's kind of a monk, one of yeah. And then they got you got Skeletor, El his, Skeleto, his, El Skeleto, his. Uh, <laughs> I was going to bring this up. His tag team partner, he's a man of science. <laughs> Why are you trying and, to baptize me? I'm a and, man of science. But they made fun <laughs> of the Jack Black character, and they because yeah. now they made fun of both of them. But they, you could tell in their writing. They like that guy. Of sci his his <laughs> it's science theology. Versus, science versus religion. That's yeah. right, yeah. and uh, that's why I brought up that about DeChambeau. I mean, and because another thing, he he was looking at all this science and trying to do all this swing, and then you know what he realized? If I just got bigger and stronger, I'll just hit it further than everybody. <laughs> yeah, and and look, guess who won the tournament yesterday? Bryson. He him. won by about six strokes. Muscle you know milk. Because he's milk. hitting at three seventy. And they're hitting in about 310. So guess what? He won. All right. So I'm going to start drinking muscle milk. Well, uh, we're out of time, man. That we, we we zoomed all the way to Nacho Libre. That's, I mean, that I was, was. I would like to, Zach, who are you going to give the responsibility for titling 
the last 45 minutes into a message. Oh, that's going to be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call it's it. It's all about the title. I, that's I, th- what I think people... I'm going to name it Attention Deficit Disorder. <laughs> <laughs> I will call this podcast, ladies and gentlemen, the quest to end up nowhere. <laughs> I can't top that. (laughs) So we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook. And be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast.